If you plan on overclocking your Ryzen 7000 CPU, you absolutely need to enable this feature on ROG's latest motherboards. Watch this. When uh, we're running an all core load, like in Cinebench or something like that, um, you'll see it boost to you know 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz like we saw. And if you're running on a single thread, it'll boost much higher, mm -hmm. uh, which is handy in, in certain games that only use one or two threads and things like that. To, oh, when you overclock, you kind of have to uh, uh, pick pick your poison a little bit. You can do a traditional all core overclock, and that will greatly benefit your multi threaded performance. Mm -hmm. But when you do Sorry. that all core overclock, you lose that extra single threaded performance. Your single threads will only boost as high as your all core overclock. So you'd actually be overclocking multi threaded runs, but your single core score would actually go down mm -hmm. because it would only boost to like 5.3 gigahertz or whatever you you set it to do. You will see in in this test here that we're still boosting pretty high. Even though we have put on an AI overclock, we're still seeing those peaks of 5.7 gigahertz like we were before. That is because our AI overclock, well, I guess so the other option is to, you know, use the traditional boosting. You could use something like Precision Boost Overdrive to push that single threaded performance a little bit higher. Um, but again, you're choosing between the all core overclock or the single threaded overclock with PBO. On our new AM5 motherboards, we have a feature called Dynamic OC Switcher. What it does is it can detect whether, I mean, you tell it kind of where you want the threshold to be in terms of amperage, but if you are running a really uh, high power multi-threaded load, you can tell it, use my manual overclock for that, for that multi-threaded load. I want high performance on that. And then when it's using a smaller single threaded load, you tell it, don't use my all core overclock, revert to the CPU's normal behavior and boost that one core really, really high. Okay. And if you're using PBO, that the PBO is kind of like just boosting that stock behavior it's expanding the limits the temperature and, and power limits of what it can do and, and so you can tell it to do that under single threaded loads so you are getting the best of both worlds this is huge uh because the last few generations there hasn't really been a great way to do that um and you kind of had to choose whether you wanted an all core overclock or you wanted to overclock single but you couldn't get both now you can get both, and that's all built in. If you're the kind of person who wants to tinker, that's where our, our, our Hero and Extreme uh, X570 e motherboards come into play. You're going to have a lot of features to play with um, to get this overclock running. So let's let's look at what dynamic using that dynamic OC switcher would look like in a manual situation. So you can uh, take your CPU core ratio here and boost the multiplier. Uh, that's like kind of the most basic manual overclock. What I actually did, this is pretty cool. So we have a feature called CPU core ratio per CCX. A CCX uh, is, is or CCD is the core chiplet die. And the CCX is like the group of, of cores within those chiplets. So if you guys remember okay. when, when Ryzen came out, the big, the big thing was all the cores aren't on one die anymore. They're now split between what they call chiplets, which are like multiple little dies on, on the CPU. And one of your dies may have the ability to overclock higher for a certain voltage than the other die. Again, it's this whole silicon lottery thing that we were talking about. So I actually found, and I haven't like super deep stress tested this, but just in basic tests, I found that this, uh, whoops, this core, uh, this, this first CCX, I could get it up to 54, uh, which is 5.4 gigahertz. And this one, I was able to get it up to a multiplier of 52, so 5.2 gigahertz. That means half the cores will boost to 5.4 gigahertz, half the cores will boost to 5.2 when you're under an all-core load. And you can do uh, even more grander. You could do 51.75. If that wasn't stable, you could knock it down just a little bit and see. You know, so this voltage is set to auto. That's where it's kind of shooting that voltage a little bit higher than it needs to because the default behavior is to stay safe. It needs to be absolutely rock solid stable for everyone. But because we're manually overclocking, we can play the silicon lottery and see how low we can push the voltage. Um, in this case, uh, we can get both of these running at, at those speeds at a core bit of like 1.273 is what our R&D team found. And again, I haven't like pushed these to the absolute limit, but this is a pretty solid, this is going to go farther than AI overclocking did. Um, I don't know if I could go farther, if I need to scale back a little bit, but we're already going to get better scores with this than we would with our AI overclock. A little bit better. Like I said, AI overclock gets you like 90% of the way there. But So under this, 
you know, if, if, if we just left it as is, we would get that higher all core uh, speed, but single core performance would uh, be lower than it is at stock. That's why we switched this dynamic OC switcher to enabled. Hmm. Uh, for the current threshold, this is an amps. Uh, we're going to put that at 90 amps for this particular chip, this uh, the 7900X. It could be different if you have like a 7600X or whatever. Um, and then just for giggles, we're going to go into precision boost overdrive. Um, and we are going to set this to enhancement. Um, again, this is like kind of a one-click solution that there's no reason not to do this. This is just going to take that that single or, or lightly threaded performance and push a little bit higher. Precision Boost Overdrive okay. basically takes the, the limits uh, that are baked into the CPU. You know, when it boosts, it says, I'm going to boost until I hit either this temperature limit or this power limit or whatever. And this basically takes those limits and stretches them a little bit farther so that when it's doing its auto boosting thing, it'll push it a little bit further to the edge. Um, but I was able to get uh, even higher scores than we got with AA overclocking. I was getting like 29,800 uh, on the multi-core and 2,040 for single core. So both of those are higher than what we were seeing before. Hey guys, thanks for watching our quick tour of this feature. If you want the full rundown on overclocking Ryzen 7000, be sure to check out the full stream at the link in the description. And for even more of ROG's latest gear, hit the subscribe button and check out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash ASUS ROG.